for the first time in history, crude oil futures traded not only below zero, but as low as negative $40 per contract for the May 2020 contract, which still has half a day or one more day to trade tomorrow, April 21st at 2.30 when it finally closes. So what the hell does that mean? Negative oil prices? Are they filling, are, you, are they paying you to fill up your car <laughs> at the gas station? Uh, not exactly, but to give you an idea of what's going through a lot of people's minds, especially the commodity traders, um, this clip is probably a very good indication. I gotta get Wilson and tell him to sell! Wilson, where are you going? Oh, idiot! Get back in there at once and sell! Sell! But I... 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 I, I So the simplest way I can explain what happened today with the May futures contract and why it went negative can best be explained by watching I Love Lucy. <laughs> That's right. So this is how the oil market works here. The chocolates on this conveyor belt that are coming out, consider them to be oil production. And Lucy and Ethel are taking these chocolates and wrapping them up and putting them in a box. So consider that to be oil demand. And so as long as the oil comes out of the conveyor belt slow enough and they box them up and they put them away quick enough, then supply meets demand. But if there's not enough people to take on the supply, meaning to take the chocolates off the conveyor belt and put them, wrap them up and put them in a box and consume them, then the supply builds up. And if the supply keeps going faster and faster, yet people are slower and slower to consume it, like we're having now with the virus. now. Even before the virus, the price of oil has fallen a lot in the last year. So consider that as there's less people to pick up these chocolates from the conveyor belt. And now there's even less people and the conveyor belt is going faster and faster. And so because of that, the contract for the oil futures specifies that you must take delivery in Cushing, Oklahoma, if you don't roll over the contract or sell it before it expires. Now, there is, there is storage in Oklahoma, but it's all filled up. And not only that, but the open interest, meaning the total number of contracts that are outstanding are very high right now compared to historical open interest. So there's like a hundred, there was 109,000 contracts. Each contract is a thousand barrels of oil. So that's like 109 million, million barrels of oil, which is about one day's uh, world oil consumption in normal times. Uh, so these people have to either sell their contract before it expires tomorrow at 2.30 or arrange to have delivery of the physical oil. And so either they don't, they're highly big speculators and didn't realize that they wouldn't be able to sell it at the end of the contract or that there wouldn't be enough storage for them to take physical delivery. Normally only like 2000 contracts actually take delivery in Oklahoma over there. And so there's 109,000 contracts that are looking for a way out that don't want to take delivery. And even if they did, there is no storage to be had. And Cushing, Oklahoma is landlocked. So there are no 
uh, oil tankers that you could pull up to a port and take delivery of. And that's why the West Texas Intermediate has such a low price compared to the Brent because the Brent has access to uh, oil tankers that can store the oil. So this is a crazy situation. And the next contract out, the June contract, is still trading at like $20. However, the open interest on that is like half a million contracts. So five times more than the May contract. Now, a lot of those will get roll, rolled over by the time the June contract comes to expire. But, um, you know, will all of them get rolled over or sold or whatever? Who knows? This is a huge amount of open interest. So there's risk that the June contract may also uh, go significantly lower than $20 or even negative or even zero or whatever. So nobody really knows right now what's going to happen but that's kind of what happened with this negative 37 dollars for the may contract meaning they either have to take delivery or they have to sell it and so when they realized they couldn't take delivery and maybe there's a lot of speculators out there they just sold all the way down <laughs> into negative numbers i don't know how they did that but uh, that's what happened and the other thing to realize is that there are a lot of commodity traders and hedge funds that trade not just the contracts but the spread in the contracts between say june and may and the spread in the contracts now is like sixty dollars which is unheard of so there may be some hedge funds or commodity funds that are blowing up right now because of that that you know bought bought the may contract all the way down and sold the june contract to kind of hedge the two to to the expectation that the the spread between the two wouldn't get too great and here we are the spread is sixty dollars or so so there are people that definitely lost a lot of money and so that's also could be the reason why it went so low a lot of people uh got liquidated or had to sell out their spreads possibly and uh, at any price so that's also what could have happened so here is the oil market so all kidding aside what does this mean for the oil market and oil stocks going forward well i'm by no means an expert in oil or oil futures or storage <laughs> um, but i would say that um, eventually they cannot just keep producing this oil and keep storing it in the hopes that eventually uh, the economy will open up and demand will come back online uh, some of these companies are going to go out of business <laughs> quickly uh, because they can't keep producing and selling at these low prices uh, as dictated by the futures market you see here. Um, also, what does that mean for oil stocks? <laughs> it seems like there's still a big disconnect because even though oil prices keep going lower, the oil stocks have seemed to have bottomed out a few weeks ago and are up a good amount from their bottoms. Does that mean we're going to retest these lows for some oil stocks for sure? So I don't know what to say right now about why these oil stocks are still uh, staying relatively high compared to the price of oil. But I would recommend that you do not try to get too cute and try to do something that you are not familiar with, like trying to buy oil futures uh, at a dollar or something like the May contract here. Leave it to the experts because even the experts are are getting their butts handed to them in this crazy market. And what does that oil demand say about the world economy? The demand for products and travel and oil and everything like that. We are in definitely uncharted territories and I find it hard to believe that the stock market truly reflects the way the economy is right now 
with it only falling like 35% from its highs and now only being down about 20% or so from its all-time highs. I think when people start to realize how bad the economy is from being shut down, they will readjust their risk, risk tolerance for owning stocks, I would say. So be cautious out there. Don't try to pick the bottom on a single stock like thinking you're going to buy some oil stock for that's two dollars right now and hoping that it goes back to thirty dollars or something like that because a lot of these small oil stocks are down for a reason and most likely a lot of them are gonna be bankrupt or bought out or not be able to pay their bonds or something and so it's it's not the time to try to bottom fish and catch falling knives so I hope you like this demonstration on uh, what's going on in the oil market. And I hope you take my words of caution to heed and uh, don't go crazy trying to pick a bottom on these oil stocks. If anything, just buy a broad index like an ETF, like XLE or VDE. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. Let me know what you think is going to happen to the June futures contract. Is it going to go negative like May has or what? I have no idea, but I would like to see what other people think about that. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.